Malawi is a country with a population expected to triple by 2040. Finding ways to feed more people in a country already struggling with malnutrition is a significant challenge. This country is largely uh, driven by agriculture. It employs over 70% of its population and contributes significantly, I believe over 30%, 30 to 40% of its GDP is based on agriculture. It's mainly smallholder based. We are in the business of empowering farmers, smallholder farmers who for a long time have been at the bottom rung of society. And uh, to me at least, working for NASWAM is not just a job, it's a calling. The coming in of Feed the Future, they've really promoted the integration and the collaboration at grassroots level. This is where you see Homer and NASFAM, they're working as a team. Much as we are promoting the production part, we've got our colleagues who are going towards the other end in terms of the nutrition part. Before the project Feed the Future, we had the nutrition activities running by the government. Since we have basis of the value chains that has brought in a novelty, which mothers are able to produce nutritious food that is used both for consumption and selling. So it's an income generating activity that women are accessing and they're accessing in so doing empowering them. So indirectly the project is also empowering women. I think that's a challenge getting you know an organization that's very much agriculturally focused and another that's very much health and nutrition focused to work together and talk to one another. Overall production in the country hovers mainly around 50% of the potential it should. Farmers are diversifying and I think that's exciting. I mean that's one of the you know, main objectives of Feed the Future, right, is to really um, get farmers to diversify and to commercialize and we are seeing that happening. Within our zone of influence, um, we saw in the 2013 and 14 agricultural season a 34% increase in soy production over the 2011 and 12 season, which we use as our baseline. So 34% is really significant and, and a lot of that is coming um, more from increased production as opposed to uh, increased yields. Improved seed production is part of Malawi's innovative and climate smart agricultural approach. Drought tolerant, disease resistant and rugged seed like CG7 ground nut can turn Malawi into a more food secure country. And so we're linking up with projects like the Integrated Nutrition Value Chain uh, Project, or INVC. They have something called the, the Village Care Group uh, System, through which children, lactating mothers, and the community in general are trained on proper nutrition. Averia is a lead farmer through the Feed the Future and NASFAM coalition, who relies on her two-hectare farm to provide enough income to feed and economically support them all. Our lead farmers so far around 30% women and they really should be at least 50 if not 60 since the proportion of male to female beneficiary farmers is, is about 60 40.. It shouldn't just be us saying we want to do integration on the ground, but trying to get local organizations to see the value in integration and to be able to learn from one another so that hopefully these activities can be sustained after you know, our funding streams may end. As climate change affects growing cycles, the challenges increase. Someone who was able and interested in becoming a promoter um, to actually go out and take their, their agriculture knowledge that they're getting through NASFAM and so these people are all groundnut or soy farmers, maybe they farm both and so they understand the value of those crops as commercial crops and as nutritious crops to consume in the home. Previously our smallholder farmers, they used to produce on average about maybe 250-400 um, kgs of groundnuts 
and even soil per hectare. This time around, we've got farmers who have managed to produce using the double row planting, go beyond 900 kgs per hectare. Increasingly, farmers recognize the, the benefit of, of planting improved seed. Most of our members are able now to reserve some legume foodstuffs after harvest. Mm. The project is really helping mitigating the malnourishment statuses from community point of view. I know one thing that the care groups do is um, put together a calendar of foods that are available throughout the year, you know, knowing that there are certain nutritious foods that are available throughout the lean season, for example, when the staple foods like maize may be scarce. We're trying to encourage families to save, you know, at least one or two bags of soy, if not more, and we're teaching them how to do, you know, just very basic household level processing of soy to be able to prepare nutritious meals. <laughs> Okay. Farmers can really reserve some for, for food and even buy their own seed because we cannot continue giving out seed throughout. So it's a behavior change thing that has to be embedded throughout the process. Mm. Okay. So there's sort of confusion um, to some extent uh, where farmers think everything, even if I'm not a member, I can benefit from some of these services. We still have roughly about 6 to 70 association field officers who have to be out there on a motorbike, which has to be fueled and so on for them to reach out in our extension system. That has been a challenge. Uh, that's why we've expanded the farmer to farmer and the uh, um, lead farmer concept. So that uh, although we have fewer people on motorbikes out on the ground, but we have more people on feet and on bikes on the ground. So that we can still get to our farmers uh, with the extension messages. I think it's you know uh, a good effort and I'm glad we're doing it because we should be building uh, the capacity of local organizations to work across sectors. I think that's one of the things that's you know just fundamentally important. Of all these nutritious crops and the different types of nutritious dishes that we're promoting, which of these are they actually adopting? Are they actually changing their behaviors? I'm really excited about seeing whether the Feed the Future's integrated agriculture nutrition approach actually has that impact. Um, we hypothesize that it will.